Hey, Sam. Uh, welcome to uh, Instrumental. How are you doing today? I am doing well. Thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks. Uh, as our newest mentor on our platform, uh, can you tell our audience or students a little bit more about yourself? What have you been working on lately? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I was born and raised in China. I actually came to the U.S. for college uh, right now, 11 years ago. Uh, so I went to Brown University uh, where I studied economics and I was mm -hmm. very passionate about entrepreneurship back then. Uh, I started a, a small food ordering app uh, well back on campus. Uh, we did 50,000 orders by the time I graduated. Uh, oh, very exciting that's time, that's right. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I couldn't really continue on with the venture due to my visa issue. So mm -hmm. I got a job on Wall Street. I started my first job out of school at uh, Credit Suisse in their technology, media, and telecom investment banking division in New York. Uh, did that for two years, then moved on to the private equity investing side. Uh, I was an associate uh, at Vector Capital in San Francisco, where mm -hmm. we focused on um, uh, technology, middle market investment. And uh, during my last year, year there, I was very involved with portfolio companies management and mm -hmm. was the, uh, um, helped out a lot of uh, purges and uh, M&A and buy out uh, post transaction um, orientation process. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at the interim kind of playing a COO role for a lot of large international corporations. Uh, two years was up there. Uh, I got my green card and decided mm -hmm. to quit finance job altogether, hoping to start a business. Back then I didn't have a good idea. Uh, so I uh, instead of enrolled at uh, Stanford uh, Business School and then for the last three years, I've been working on my MBA as well as working uh, and advising startups in the Bay Area um, yeah. uh, with their go to market and uh, uh, product market fit. Uh, helped build two early AI teams to build prototypes. Uh, and right now, uh, I just recently finished my uh, advisory engagement with startups to folks starting on my own company. Wow, wow, that's a fantastic uh, career and, and what an awesome experience you have. So uh, uh, also, like, do, do you have a favorite quote? Like what, what, what gets you out of bed every day? Yeah, uh, my favorite quote would be from uh, the book Shoe Dog uh, uh -huh. by Phil Knight. Uh, okay, founder yeah, I read of the Nike. book. Yeah, founder of Nike. It's less of a quote, it's more uh, how he opened the, uh, the book with. He was like, mm -hmm. I was running. Uh, he was maybe two or three years out of business school and uh, had no idea uh, what's going on with his life uh, and career, but he knew he loved running. So he kept running and made a business out of running and founding Nike. And I uh, was very inspired by that story. Yeah, me too. I read that book and it's so inspiring. That, uh, it made, made me want to uh, uh, and started running like five days a week now. So uh, yeah, that's awesome. a fantastic read. Yeah. So great. So now I wanted to uh, ask you a few questions about your early career because uh, uh, most that's of cool. uh, inst instrumental students and our audience are uh, uh, in their uh, early stage of the career. Yeah. And also uh, there are also many uh, young professionals and, and college graduates uh, who are interested to landing their first job. Uh, so when you first started your career at uh, Credit Suisse, uh, what, what, is, what, what did you learn from like the interview process and uh, what, what is the best piece of advice uh, yeah. for anyone who is interested in working at an investment bank? What, what is the uh, best skills to learn and how to break into this industry? Yeah, I thought and I still think that investment banking is probably one of the uh, best jobs out there to prepare <laughs> a college grad uh, for <laughs> business fields in general the analytical modeling and quantitative skills it, it will teach you is priceless. Um, right. Well, whereas, I, I mean, you, you can go directly into many other fields after school, even start your own company. But mm -hmm. I would say banking is uh, very much higher, uh, uh, higher, highly ranked uh, there in terms of career yeah. preparation. Mm -hmm. um, and the best piece of advice to break into this banking, I would say, is uh, networking. Mm -hmm. and as well as showing initiative. Um, and I will break it down. Um, so on networking front, it's right. really hard to just submit your resume and try to stand out with um, how you write your resume. 
because right. there's just too many of those resumes and people spend maybe less than 30 seconds, maybe like 15 seconds per yeah, resume. Probably, very yeah. hard to stand out. So mm -hmm. you got to talk to alumni from your school at various banks that you want to work with. Um, right. Reach out to them cold, call them, etc. There are ways to get in as, as, as long as you look for it. The right. second one is showing initiatives, meaning that do activities at school or even start your own little investment portfolio, et cetera, uh, but mm -hmm. show your uh, genuine interest in business and in finance. Right. Um, and obviously a lot of technical uh, skills and during the interview uh, can be learned and that will be a good initiative to show as well to mm -hmm. be prepared for those technical interviews. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, you know, funny thing is that uh, uh, last week I was in an online uh, network event. I was talking to a few uh, 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 graduates who just graduated this year, and uh, they, they all uh, share the same enthusiasm about going to a, a specific industry and uh, uh, their networking. Uh, even though they're uh, still uh, in their early stage, they have uh, been working on some new projects, uh, even for free of their time, so that they can add those experiences to their uh, resume to, to get the, uh, um, to yeah. pass through the first round of uh, interview process. Yeah, so Absolutely. definitely, so, so in summary, uh, networking and the showing initiatives. Yeah. Yes. Totally agree. Awesome, awesome. So uh, uh, while you were working at Credit Suisse, you, you've been there, you worked there for about two, three years, and then you uh, uh, became an investor in uh, Vector Capital. Like, can you tell us, uh, uh, why you made the, the change and uh, what, what did you uh, uh, worked on in the, uh, uh, in the venture capital firm? Yes, uh, so uh, during this banking, I had a genuine interest in uh, following the, the transactions, not just mm -hmm. advising them during the transaction, but I, I just generally uh, love to, I love those businesses and want to be further involved. And right. I think being on the investor set of things, allows you to not just focus on the transaction itself, but really mm -hmm. focus on the underlying business and have the, the long-term continuation with the business. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I moved from in this banking to private equity. Uh, and well, at Vector, I think uh, it's a middle market private equity firm. We uh, do a lot of diligence on middle market technology companies, uh, uh, examine the special situations that might uh, offer uh, attract attractive valuations on certain businesses and get in uh, early time uh, within the life cycle of those businesses. I find the job of being an investor very exhilarating uh, because, mm -hmm. because it allows you to build that long-term relationship with the business. Right. You, you also will get uh, also get a chance to meet a lot of uh, very smart people, entrepreneurs, and then, uh, uh, you're helping them with their business and, and some of them uh, Probably so. What stage of uh, the companies you guys invested in? In the early stage or late stage? Yeah, so mostly on the later stage in private okay. equity uh, because we mm -hmm. were more cash flow driven. Um, Got it. Well, that's a great question because um, uh, working with the later stage companies uh, allows me to s look into the business field. But mm -hmm. I personally found it more exciting to focus on the early set of businesses. That's mm -hmm. why I left after two years of being a, a private equity investor to focus now on the seed stage or pre-seed <laughs> stage starting my right. startup. Awesome, awesome. So uh, uh, now, now you're also uh, brewing your own ideas, like changing the, the role from uh, uh, investor to uh, entrepreneur. Like, is it okay to talk about your your, your new yeah. idea in, in machine learning space? Like, uh, yeah, uh, we, we talked about it uh, uh, a while ago about your um, uh, your 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 new uh, ideas about helping companies to hire in the machine learning space. And uh, like, just curious, like, what what made you what motivates you the most about thinking about in this space? Like, what uh, uh, what why did you spend time or doing research on this? Yeah, absolutely. For the last three years, I've worked with two AI startups, mm -hmm. helped both build their early AI teams, tech teams, hired CTO, uh, as well as building early prototypes. And mm -hmm. amongst those experiences, uh, the, the biggest challenge for, for us or for the startups were to find the right, right technical talent. Right. And uh, it's already hard to hire for general software engineering talents. And it's even harder to hire for machine learning 
data scientists, uh, those data oriented roles. Uh, right. As such, I was inspired by those experiences. And recently met my uh, partner, uh, mm -hmm. who's a PhD student uh, in machine learning at Stanford as well. And we're yeah. teaming up together to solve those problems. That's great. That's awesome. So uh, there, there definitely, this is a, 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 a two size issues, right? In the, uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, companies trying to hire the best talents and uh, um, especially in the startup early stage, uh, they not only have to find a good pool of good candidates, uh, even if they decide to uh, move on to an offer, they have very often they have to compete with uh, big companies like uh, uh, Google, Facebook, or, or Apple. Right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's definitely a very challenging space, but it's, it's definitely a problem that's worth solving. Uh, and, and I'm sure there are uh, tons of students or, or people who have very good academic background or very, very technical. Uh, that I want to break into the AI space. Like, do you have any uh, insights on why uh, it, it's so hard to break into this space? Why, uh, what kind of skills that you see are lacking uh, from, from, from those people that to be a, a successful or a great machine learning engineer? Yeah, absolutely. I've talked to over maybe a hundred by now, like a CTOs <laughs> at various stages uh, of startups or, or big tech companies. Uh, hiring uh, for machine learning and data science roles. And the, you know, a few pieces of advice that I got from them include, first, uh, right now it's extremely hard to uh, determine uh, the real skill sets of those right. machine learning and data science engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, normal times you, you will get, you will be asked about a few software, general software, enge software engineering questions lead code question, et cetera, which are very uh, less relevant for a particular role. So the industry is shifting towards more kind of machine learning focused questions, mm -hmm. um, but that's in process. At the same time, you know, the advice for, for um, data science or machine learning engineers would be to continue to hone in your uh, coding skills because you will need those on the job. Um, don't waste too much time, you know, <laughs> working with those existing question banks um, because they're re less relevant. And we're honestly, we're building a, a better uh, ones that are targeted specifically for this sector. Um, the second piece of advice would be to be able to talk through your rationale on you know, the data set collection. How would you go about cleaning the data to right. model selection? Why and, and what's the trade-offs? And yeah. what kind of results are you looking for? Why do they make business sense? So go look beyond just coding, but really mm -hmm. understand why are you doing what you're doing and how would you go about doing those with all the constraints from data, from tech, from business sites combined, mm -hmm. consider. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think, uh, yeah, people are saying like 90% of the data science and machine learning projects fail, right? So there, there are multiple reasons. Uh, definitely for companies that uh, already have a good uh, talents. Uh, very often, uh, uh, from my own experience, I feel like some people have been uh, fantasizing about uh, the power of AI or machine learning, right? They, they, even, they don't even have a very clear uh, uh, goals about what you uh, want to use AI for. So some companies like, especially for early stage uh, companies, if they're not uh, just so, uh, focusing on solving an AI problem, uh, the best piece of advice I've seen so far is uh, first focusing on you know, your first 100 customers, right? So build the uh, product out, out there, uh, make yeah. sure that you're solving the right problems. And then in, your, in a later stage, maybe uh, round A or round B, then you hire, study hiring uh, AI talents and you build your machine learning system uh, to help speed up and scale up yeah. your, your business. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, so... Uh, that's a, that's a very interesting idea. Uh, uh, as a former hiring manager myself, I've been uh, 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 faced many challenges in the, in the hiring process as well. Like one, one role that we posed uh, in my previous company, like Apple, we received like thousands of candidates. Uh, many of them are super smart, but as, the, uh, as you mentioned, uh, some of them are uh, very focused on specific area. Like they're focusing on coding skills. They're, they're really good with coding, but uh, uh, they don't have a very good sense about product. They don't have a very good sense about uh, 
uh, how hard it is to get the right data, right? So now uh, some of the AI uh, industry leaders like Andrew Ng is talking about uh, a data-centric AI, right? So the, the data is the, uh, for, for many, many, uh, 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 there, are, there are many factors that are super important in determining the success of your AI project. Uh, but now I think people um, in, in the industry are realizing that uh, uh, the more uh, more important is probably uh, focusing on the data, getting the clean data, yeah. uh, make sure that the, the, uh, we remove all the noise, clean them up before we feed them into a, a model. So yeah. uh, I've seen some, some trends that are changing in the industry as well. Exactly. And it, for aspiring uh, data scientists or machine learning engineers, it's very important to be able to tell or on your resume clearly state what your skill sets are. What are you mm -hmm. good at? There's so many different sub domains within machine learning or right. end data science. Um, just be very, very specific as that's what the company is, is looking for. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, so you, you save time by not going through processes that are looking for a different set of skills. Totally, totally, yeah, hundred percent agree. So, uh, thanks, thanks, Sam, for your great piece of advice. Now, I uh, I wanted to shift gear a little bit about your uh, about mentoring. Uh, so, you you definitely have a fantastic career so far. You're an entrepreneur, you're an investor, and you're a startup uh, founder as well. So, uh, wanted to. Uh, uh, ask you a few questions regarding mentoring uh one, one first question is like do you ever have any mentor in your life or career uh, if so what do you think you, you learned the most from them yeah absolutely i had a mentor when i was going from college to in banking the same mm -hmm. the same uh, another mentor while transitioning into private equity i have mm -hmm. mentors uh, that i talked to uh while starting a startup i think it's good to have uh, for, for me personally back then uh, and right now to have a different kind of unbiased point of view uh, mm -hmm. that guides you through the process. Uh, he or she is not going to tell you what to do, but really right. provide his opinion or just mm -hmm. someone you can bounce ideas with. Sometimes right. it's just help more help, like helpful for me to speak to him about my ideas. And while talking about myself, I have right. new ideas that I already or, or have a new, uh, more clarity on what I need to do by simply just talking. Um, right. So I think it's good to just have someone there bouncing ideas off with. Fantastic. Yeah. So there, there was an old Chinese saying, I'm sure you heard about it, uh, which uh, if we translate it to English, uh, it goes something like uh, a single conversation across the table with a wise man is going to worth much more than reading a hundred books all by yourself, right? <laughs> so uh, that's that's actually what I'm doing today, like talking to you and learn from you and then share your insights and knowledge uh, about career and uh, uh, interview to our audience as well. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's that's a great piece of advice you, you have given to, to us. I think uh, for those who uh, have not started a official on uh, unofficial mentorship uh, uh, relationship yet or someone who, have not found their uh, mentor yet. What, what is your experience? How did you, uh, what is your secret uh, uh, sauce to, to finding a good mentor? Um, my secret sauce to, so, sauce to finding a good mentor is to uh, really, um, mm -hmm. for me, I've been utilizing my own personal network, just people mm -hmm. uh, who, I, I'm really looking for people who have similar career path or trajectory. Uh, to where I want myself to be in the next few years. Um, right. So anyone who have gone through that or in a similar field would be extremely helpful for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I also want someone who have just gone through that process maybe a few years ahead of me, not like too many decades out. It's then it becomes uh, less relevant. So someone just you know a little bit uh, like right before me, but then that, that can give me direct guidance. Totally, totally. Yeah, I, I was uh, on uh, on Twitter the other day and I saw a guy who posted uh, something like, um, if you wanted to accomplish something, uh, the best way to accomplish it is to hire somebody as your mentor who, uh, and, and this someone who has done it. Uh, yeah. like, like learning from someone who shared the same goal, but uh, uh, with you, uh, but have already achieved it and figured out their way. Uh, and just having a simple conversation with them is going to save you so much time figuring out yep. yourself. So yep. uh, that's actually one of the uh, uh, motivations why uh, I launched uh, Instrumental. So uh, 
Great. So uh, thank you for, for, for your time today. And uh, I'm going to run in. Uh, I have to keep an eye on your time so I know how busy you are. So uh, uh, last few questions. Uh, if you uh, can go back to your early career, uh, would you have done something differently? Uh, what would you say to the younger self? Um, I would say younger self, I would say just go out there and do it. Try it out. Talk to people, get advice and by the end of the day, it's all about actions. Right. Okay. Yeah, I totally agree. Action speaks louder than- Don't uh, think too much. Yeah. <laughs> Don't think too much. Don't wait. Get it now. Right. Like, talk to the right people. Get the right advice. Go do the right thing. Right. Uh, it, yeah. That's great. Good advice. Yeah. So we are fortunate to have you uh, as one of our newest mentor on, on, the, on the platform. So if, you, uh, if somebody wants to uh, talk to you and, and learn from you, like what- uh, uh, what what do you think they will be able to get away from you uh, from from a, a relation, mentorship relationship with you? Um, I would say someone who wants to break into investment banking, break into uh, private equity, or thinking about quitting finance to go into startups, <laughs> or just generally to go into startups. You know, I have had uh, many uh, 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 different kinds of startup experiences. I'm still trying to figure out myself, but I have made a lot of mistakes that I can share for you to avoid those mistakes. You are. Uh, so that that's uh, that's a, what, what, that's probably it. awesome. Thanks, thanks so much. And uh, if you have uh, uh, enough time or resources to pursue a, a crazy idea, uh, in addition to what you're already doing, what would that be? Uh, a new crazy idea. Yeah, crazy idea. Uh, uh, imagine you have unlimited resources and, and budget. And yeah. Uh, yeah, what would that be? Yeah, I would love to uh, start a uh, uh, an app that helps people read faster because now I read so much and <laughs> I feel like if there's an assistant uh, or summarization to it that can help me read faster, that would be great. Okay, that's that's awesome. Yeah, what what do you think about the uh, uh, G, GPT three? Uh, there's some great excitement about GPT 3s uh, great NLP uh, capability, like summarizing text and making yeah uh, making reading easier. Do you feel like that's something that that, that that interesting to you? Yeah, I think that's super exciting. I've been playing around with it quite a bit, uh, tested it extensively. I think it's uh, maybe eighty percent there. It still has some way to go, but uh, I right. think it's definitely, you know, it's very powerful too. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Sam, and really appreciate your time today. Uh, we uh, wanted to wish you uh, uh, the best in your um, uh, entrepreneurship, and uh, hopefully we'll get back to you, uh, we'll back, get you back to our show sometime in the future. Yeah, thank you so much, Sam. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.